Pre-season testing is done and dusted, and that means just one thing. It's time for the 2024 Formula One season to get underway. And for Tech Talk, where should we start to look other than one of the most interesting and important cars that we've seen for a while? Let's take a look. It is, of course, the Mercedes. I'm not looking at the wrong car, by the way. This is, of course, last year's Mercedes, the 2023 Mercedes W14. And I just want to draw your attention to a couple of points on this car, which will be coming up in this video. Take a look at the design of the tip of the nose of this all-black car. This is early in the season last year. And then as I play this clip forwards, we can take a look at another interesting feature on the car. Have a look at what is nicknamed the Great Walled Concept. This big swooping down section with a really high side of the engine cover. Now, that's not something we're going to see on the Mercedes this season at all. But you are going to see it during the 2024 F1 season. Where are you going to see it? Well, where else than at Red Bull, of course. Red Bull have adopted that exact same Great Wall philosophy that Mercedes trialled and ultimately dropped. So let's go and have a look at the brand new Mercedes because that car in itself is just absolutely fascinating. Here it is in pre-season testing. And I just want to draw your attention again to the tip of the nose of the car. And you can see just how different it truly is. The shape of the nose is fundamentally different on the new car than it is to the old. But also from a structural point of view, it's worth noting that the nose only connects to the second element of the front wing and not the leading element of the front wing like it used to. That's something that's become a bit of a trend amongst the teams up and down the grid. And it's something they all seem to have copied from last year's Red Bull. Red Bull, though, have gone a completely different direction and copied last year's Mercedes. Well, Mercedes have decided to do their own thing. Well, the front wing of the Mercedes as well is interesting for other reasons, because quite a lot of teams have noticed, and we've all noticed and commented on, this section of their front wing, the fourth element of the wing, such as it is. F1 teams are allowed to have up to four elements in their front wing. One, two, three, four. But look at the outer element of the front wing. It's pretty standard in its shape all the way up to that central section where it's almost the width of my little finger. It barely exists at all. And to understand exactly what's going on with that section of the wing, who better to talk to than the man who created the car in the first place, James Allison. The rules require that, that, um, that, that any given flap, so you, you can have four flaps, that any given flap element has to sort of go from the tip of the wing to the, to the, to the root of the wing and it can't stop halfway. So if you, want, if you want a flap, say, outboard on the wing, but you don't, you don't really want it inboard because you don't want the load that it's going to provide inboard on the wing, then one way to cope with that is to make that, wing much that flap much smaller in the place where you don't really want it to be doing its thing. And the rules allow you to shrink the flap down. Uh, so we've just done that in quite an extreme fashion. So our flap is broad cord where we want it to be, but then it tapers away to a just sort of little pencil thickness uh, inboard. Moving backwards from that oh so interesting front wing, the car doesn't get any less boring. The secret weapons of Mercedes were teased, were trolled by the F1 team coming into its launch. They, the Mercedes team issued this 3D rendering of their new car. And usually when you see these 3D renderings, they're absolute nonsense. They bear very little similarity to the real F1 car at all. But have a look here at the front suspension. We thought this was a rendering error. We thought it was a mistake by the team. They'd added in two <laughs> rear legs of the upper wishbone, and that's just silly. Nobody's actually going to do that, are they? Well, when we got to pre-season testing, the third day of testing gave us all a little bit of a surprise. Check this out. Now, we've talked a bit about this already, but I think it's worth going a bit deeper into this. So have a look, this is the top element of the front wishbone arrangement. That's the leading element there, but have a look at the lower element of the front wishbone. It comes in and picks up on the bit of the chassis just further rearwards, and you can see the angle between these two parts here. That's pretty clear, pretty standard, nothing to write home about. But on the third day of testing, Mercedes turned up with something looking a little bit different. And it took a while for anybody to notice that the car had a fundamentally different front suspension layout. 
There's that same top element, the, lead, the forward arm of the upper wishbone. No change in that. But look at the rear leg of the lower wishbone. The angle is completely different. It's mounted much lower down. Now, some people thought, oh, well, you can just adjust these things. You can mount things differently, make an adjustment. Suspension on racing cars is always adjustable. But a change like that is fundamental to the design of the monocoque, the design of the chassis of the car. To change a part like that, you'd normally have to introduce a completely new chassis. Or you'd have to have a big insert into the side of the car that you had to remove and put back in. That would add a huge amount of weight. And in an era where weight is all important, that's really confusing. But when we took a closer look at the car coming into the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend, a few secrets did get revealed. And I have to pay credit to Craig Scarborough for picking up a little bit of this because if you have a look at this plate that sits on the inner edge of the chassis, you can see where that wishbone pickup point is. Now this is in the high position, which Mercedes opted to go with for this weekend. But underneath this single, I think it's pretty thin sheet of carbon fiber, there is actually a second pickup point molded into the side of the chassis. Now, this means it's a really conscious decision from the Mercedes team to be able to switch from this upper position of the suspension to the lower position, just like that pre-season rendering stated. But to do that, it's undoubtedly going to add weight to the structure of the monocoque itself because you can't just make a choice like this and then just give up on it. It is adding weight to the car. So they clearly were unsure about the best position of the suspension. And will they switch between it during the season? Well, to explain a little bit more about what they were doing with this layout, James Allison was on hand in pre-season testing to explain to Lawrence Barreto. Yeah, we saw, I think today, um, our tech analyst saw the front suspension. You were just playing around with like different positions of that. I guess that's what testing's for, isn't it? To just try and see what, what works and what doesn't work. So yeah, well. I think specifically you guys will have seen that we were changing the anti-dive level on the front suspension. And uh, that's exactly the sort of change that you really can't do between runs in free practice sessions. So, um, yeah, useful to get that done and get a, get a bunch of runs on it today compared to yesterday and make our decisions. Fascinating stuff there from James, but let's hear what Formula One's Chief Technical Officer, Pat Simmons, had to say about this concept, because I think when he looked at this design in pre-season testing, his thoughts were really, really interesting. Yeah, intriguing that one, isn't it? Because at the launch, it was sort of noticed, people commented on it. Uh, people thought it was a rendering error or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's real life. So. Uh, I haven't actually really had a, a good look at that yet. Um, I guess my eye was taken off the ball by the front wing. Hell of an innovation uh, if it's what we think it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, I guess that they've done this before with their steering system and things. So um, you have to find all these little nuances. And when people say, oh, the rules are so restrictive, you know, we, we can't be creative anymore. Rubbish. You can be. And they are. Now, continuing our rearward tour through this brand new Mercedes, I thought we'd just stop off quickly and have a look at the roll hoop. This is something I like to do because the roll hoop is a big old piece of engineering. It's the highest point of the car. It also has a big effect on the center of gravity height, and it can have an impact on the weight distribution of the car forwards to rear. One of the points that everybody's talking about is the driver's head. Now, this isn't Lewis Hamilton's head here. It's one of the mechanics, but the cockpit and driver's head position is further rearwards relative to the front axle. Something Lewis Hamilton hated last year was being sat far too close to the front wheels. That's been moved rearward this year and that's something the team have had to change. Now the roll hoop itself is something that does look pretty similar conceptually to all recent Mercedes. You've got this oval airbox and this A-frame for the rollover structure itself. And then you've got these kinked forwards remote supports. There'll be some more supports underneath the bodywork back here. However, this is something that all teams have had to have modified coming into this season because the regulations have meant this structure needs to be a lot stronger with new load tests coming in from the top and the side and they have to meet those new more stringent tests. So this has been redesigned, re-engineered and I can't really see how teams have been able to not make these designs a bit heavier but they're going to have to make that trade off elsewhere on the car. Now, moving to the rear of the car, it's always good to take a look at the car from behind. And you can see a few little details here of the car that just are worth looking at, but are not, you know, groundbreaking stuff. You've got a double lower beam wing. That's fairly standard. That's something the team will play around with the during the season, undoubtedly. You've got a slightly dished rear wing, but again, it's quite a big wing. 
Again, you're going to see a lot of changes with that through the season. Single rear pylon support, a little bit of the cooling, rear cooling, you can see some of the outlets. And you can also see this very distinctive Ferrari-inspired gullied rear section. That's something Mercedes adopted partway through last year and have gone a bit further with this year. But they're still not as extreme as, say, Aston Martin or Alpine in that concept of the car. So could they go a bit further? Looking under the bodywork, there is a bit of space to play with. But looking at the car from the rear is important because the rear end of this Mercedes was the real focus of James Allison and the design team going year on year. And to explain exactly what they were focusing on, well, we asked the man himself. There are some specific things that we wanted to make sure we got right on this car. We wanted to make sure that the thing that both drivers have complained about for a couple of years, which is that they don't trust the rear end, that when they turn in, they're not sure whether it's going to snap round on them. We wanted to cure that. And that's not an aerodynamic thing, that's more of a mechanical, a mechanical thing, making sure that the rear suspension presents the tyres to the road in a predictable way uh, that doesn't get disturbed as the load changes on the rear. Now, with all of that focus on the rear end, Mercedes did opt to make a pretty fundamental choice at the rear of the car switching from a pull rod rear suspension to a push rod rear suspension design that's a really big choice for the team and in order to achieve that they had to make some fundamental changes to the transmission casing to explain exactly what they did it's that man again it's james allison well we went to a push rod because uh, we were finding it quite constraining having all of our inboard suspension the springs and the dampers and the roll bars packaging them inside the gearbox casing which is where they have to reside if you're using a pull rod because the pull rod comes down and then it joins up with all the rockers and the springs low down in the car where it's inside the gearbox. Switch to a push rod, you can get it on top of the box where it's more accessible, therefore brings more opportunities to you in terms of spring layouts and stuff. So that's one aspect of the change. The more important changes were uh, just organizing the wishbones and the track rod in such a way as the uh, suspension is much more uh, capable of keeping the rear axle pointed in a good direction, presenting the contact patch to the road in an effective way as the load comes on and off the tyres with speed changes and with load changes as you go around corners. So all of those little changes made to the Mercedes will add up and make a big difference. And it's amazing how far the team have come since they introduced this so-called zero pod side pod concept all the way back at the beginning of 2022. Nobody really liked it, and it was introduced at Bahrain. A few teams have taken a look at it, as we've seen with Red Bull. Will they be able to make it work later in the season? If they do, I think it will be quite interesting to see if the legacy of this car, the Mercedes W14, or it's this car, the Mercedes W15 concept, that works out to be the real winner when it gets out on track. <laughs>